everyone, Kim Castellano. Thanks for uh, staying with us for another episode of Conversations That Inspire. Today, I'm here at the Avenue of Flags with our next guest, and we're gonna be talking about Veterans Day and also about the making of the, the Avenue of the Flags. So with me is Keith Oakley and Joe Tezzolini. No, Tezzolino. Tezzolino, and they are, the, you're on the, tell us just a little bit about your position here so the people watching know who you are and what well, you do. We're co-chairman of the Clifton Veterans Avenue of Flags, which was started in 2002 with 230 flags. Now today we have 2,240 flags. And the significance is that each one has a name of a veteran. And that's why it's so important. Yes, and Joe, now we're here looking at... Well, actually we're standing uh, in the field of honor. This section right here is, uh, how many flags are in here? 285. 285. 285 veterans that were killed in action. World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and Iraq. Uh, so were these Clifton residents? All Clifton all, all, residents. Yeah, you have to be a Clifton resident one time or another, and you have to be a veteran to have wow. a flag. Okay, so now tell us a little bit. So the over the years, uh, we've acquired certain features for this field. Uh, one of the first ones was the cannon, and then the one with all the uh, service services: Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine. Yeah, I see. Uh, we acquired this a few years back. This is a called a combat cross, and and. Wars before, when somebody fell in combat and killed in action, they took their rifle and bayonet and helmet and stuck it in the ground next to where they fell. So the uh, graves committee, the one that picked up the bodies, knew where to find the bodies after the battle. Uh, each one of these rifles represents a time period for war. World War One and World War Two, World War Two, Korea. Uh, Vietnam and Iraq. This uh, this monument designates the uh, field of honor. Uh, those who gave their lives in various branches of the service which are displayed there. And, uh, we have Army, Navy, Marine. So those are the emblems. Those are the emblems of the services. Coast Guard. This one is? Air Force. Air Force. Okay. And our uh, killed in action flag, which is uh, a few years we got that. It just came out. Okay, what are we looking at here? Honored Clifton veterans right. killed in action? Well, this is our newest monument. We did this two years ago. It was de dedicated on November 11th, 2020. And what this represents is all the 285 flags that are here. And it's done by war and it's done by service. So in other words, uh, World War I, U.S. Army, wherever out, where there wasn't a Navy then, whatever, and uh, goes right along, right to the one we have for Iraq. And uh, that's the last one uh, we had in Clifton in 35 years. Hopefully we never have any more. But so, every name is listed here. So the one that says Iraq USA, that's our only Clifton right, resident? Right, that's our only Clifton oh, resident yeah. that was killed in Iraq. Wow. So it goes by each? By right, each war. So you got World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and Iraq. Okay, so now tell me, how do you get a flag? Can you tell us the process about that? flag and being a part of this beautiful um, monument and sure. part of the... it's very easy. Number one, you have to be a Clifton resident at one time or another, and you have to be a veteran. That's the most special okay. one. And then we have an application, which we'll show you. Okay. And you fill out the application, and you give us a DD-14 and a, and a record of when you lived in the city, so we know that you're mm -hmm. legit, and then we will get your flag. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a walk. I'm looking forward to seeing behind the scenes of these flags. A lot of people don't know 
the process of this whole system yep. and how the flag is it comes from an application to another yep. process which we're going to go inside it's, and it's a lot more than people a lot think. more than people think that's what made me so excited to say it. let's go take a look how the flag is made okay so let's go a dd 214 is part of the discharge process of the Okay. So we're inside the avenue of the flags and we're, and we're with Keith and Joe who just showed us the wonderful flags um, outside. But now we're asking how do I get a flag? So there is a process here and uh, Joe, you want to explain which one you want to explain for the application or that form? What do we need to do to have first? Well, the application is first. In order to fill out the application, you have to have some identification. You have to have your DD-214 form, and you have to have a, a residency form that you were a proof that you were a resident in Clifton. And Joe will talk about the DD-214. Okay, how do you get this application, though? On you websites? Can, online. It's online, or you can call us. We'll mail it to okay. you, or whatever you want to do. Okay. You, usually the people... When we put the flags up, that's they what they get them to. They pick up a lot people of People know that we're here a lot, so they'll stop here and get an application. Okay. When they return the application, uh, two of the major things that, besides the address proving they were living mm -hmm. cooked in, is the discharge papers. Uh, DD-214, it, it's came, got a complete list of everything that they basically did in the military, mm -hmm. right? When they signed they up, served. when they ended, where they served, uh, all medals they received. And this is a copy of uh, a discharge paper, oh. an honorable discharge. Uh, and these users, I get, we get them in the mail, Just like and it that. comes in the mail. All, all this plus the uh, verification of address, and right? All, so. And whatever fee is included, right? Needed, right? So, um, okay, so and right now it's one hundred and twenty dollars for flag. We had to raise oh. it. Because okay. as you know, with everything else, yeah. the poles and the flags, I mean, it's just ridiculous Supplies, how much they cost. cost now. Yeah. So. All right, so we're going to go and take a look on how these flags are beautiful. Each one is handcrafted. Now, I did not know that. So that's why I want to go to this workbench that you guys have. Now, who, who rides this truck? Bill. It's Bill. Bill. Usually Bill. Usually Bill. That's our maintenance truck, if you want to call it. Oh, okay. You know, so we see this running around, and yep. inside there is everything that you need for maintenance and repair. And, and, and to put a new flag in, and hold, make a hole, whatever we got to do. Okay. His background is a, is a maintenance. I mean, he knows. Yeah. yeah he's a, a lot of maintenance. He's a Vietnam, Vietnam veteran, veteran, bronze from star, army. Winner. Okay. Joe's a Purple Heart winner. Winner, I shouldn't say. No. That's not okay. right. But. Okay. So let's take a look. Um, I'll follow you, and we'll go back here and see what it takes to make a flag. Okay, so paperwork's handed in. Now show us what happens once I, you know, I qualify for a flag. Right, right. Everything's done. Do you notify them that they are getting a flag? We, we usually do not, and the reason that we don't is because sometimes, most of the time, a lot of times it's a surprise or whatever. Okay. And uh, so that's why we don't So they're do not that. getting anything in but the they, mail? No. no, but they can okay. call and tell, and we'll tell them where the flag's going to be okay. and all that. Because it's all located, location. Right. It's all located right. in different colors and stuff. Okay. Like that, so. so if this application comes in, first of all, how do you even determine where it's going? Well, we, we have different sections, and what happens is, say, there's no, here's our next section. We start putting them there. When that fills, we go to another section. Okay. Right. Okay, and I'll so explain. I'll explain the sections and the yeah, colorings okay. that you see here. Okay. Okay. Well, so the application comes in. I get it in the office. Mm -hmm. I put the, all the information into the computer, and we have a list of that. Uh, and I come back here, and uh, I pull out a flag. A pole. A pole. This is the way the poles come. They come in, in those boxes back there. Uh, comes with a piece of rope because it's normally Meats. people buy one flag and they tie the, the flag up at mm -hmm. home and all. But we have a, a different process here. We don't need the rope and I, I don't need this eye ring here. But I use the hole. Now, when I first started here, we take the flags, we take the poles, and we use our glue. Put it on the, on the poles here and up here, 
and I put it back together to make it one piece. But I found out, we found out that putting the uh, glue on this polyurethane that's on here, uh, when people put the flags in and pull them out, they get stuck sometimes, they came apart. Oh. And the reason being is that the glue wasn't getting, was just sitting on top of this. Uh, okay, it was too thing. tight going through that sleeve. It needs, it needs, the glue needs to be on the wood. So I have to come in here and I take these poles and I have a little system here where I get this bracket off and I put it in here and I knock it off. Okay. So now I have both pieces of the pole. And I have to get that polyurethane off, so I just plug it in, grab the pole. It's going to be a little loud. Okay. I take, I take the polyurethane off so that the glue goes right to the wood. And I take the two pieces, line them up, I get the glue. So isn't there polyurethane on that side? No. No, I, right. I, I did Only that side. I did that side right. Oh, so you have to do both. Okay, so the pole comes in two pieces. The pole comes in two pieces. And the glue is holding on pretty good, so. But how long does it take to do it? Uh, oh, that's how uh, you get glue. Oh, okay, you might not there. Well, I got a system here, and uh, it works pretty good. So I take the glue. Come on, glue. I haven't used it in a while, so it might take a while before this gets out. It's right here. Here it goes. So you go to both sides. Good both sides. And I take this side. I can leave okay, now you need that right there. In there. They come pretty tight. How tall is this pole? Ten foot pole. Ten foot pole. Wow, you're lucky you guys don't break the lights and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah I still knows what he's doing. Oh, look at this. Wow. Yep. Yeah. So you got the poles together, then I place it on here. Now at this point, what I do is we have a nameplate mm -hmm. from a Little Falls Trophy. That we give them the information, and I take the nameplate and I bring it over to the station here. Because the pole is curved and this is a flat nameplate, I got to curve the nameplate and I put in this so little bracket little... here. And that gives me a curve wow. on the nameplate. And I make sure it's set up. This nameplate here is uh, my marker. Marker. I put the nameplate on there. I take the drill. <laughs> uh, 
So you drill the holes first. I drill the holes. Who are some of the people that uh, put these flags together from the beginning? John Beagle used to do it almost himself. I've done it. When I first came, I used to do it too with him. Uh -huh. We had an old gentleman that did it. We were in the other barn, he passed away. Now I'm just supposed to put these things together. Yeah. I should have my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Right? Well, they're right there. I lost them. While he's doing that, we might add to that. We have five members of the committee for the okay. Apple flags. Myself, Joe, mm -hmm. we also have Bill Vinick, we have Marie Schulteis, and we have John Watt. And uh, the five of us all have our own jobs. We literally don't even have to talk to each other because everybody knows what they've got to do, and yeah. we just go nice. and do it. And now what I do is I take these tapes that you see up here, yep, the colors. and we have... Uh, Green, section. green and green orange. orange. Just a green and orange section. That's our latest section. So I will mark. I have my marks here. Oh yeah, so you like see the markings where the tapes go. The tapes go on mm -hmm. here. Spin it around. A couple of racks. Do this part first because it's a little harder uh, if I, if I put the, flag the flags on. on. Right. It's harder to spin. Okay, so that's how you. Uh, that's how we mark our. You mark the sections, and that pole won't get lost. Okay, so this flag is ready to go into the green and orange section. Now, got it. what I do is I take a flag. All this is purchased separately. Yes. yes. We usually purchase uh, two dozen flags and two dozen poles. At once. At once, because uh, after every holiday, Eric, every time we put the flag up, you have we orders. get an influx right. of people who want flags. So you're ready to go. Right. right. And uh, so, it's harder to get some of the stuff now. In fact, yeah, we, really. we waited a long time to get flags the last time. They didn't have them. Okay. What I do, the screws in a washer, I put soap on it. It's an old carpenter, old time carpenter trick. And I put the screw into uh, that hole where that Hook came out of? Yes. And I take the... So I notice your drills are all set up for whatever job it's supposed to do. So you got three of them here. Well, when Instead I came... Instead of changing I, them and... When I came in, they had one drill. <laughs> yeah. And I had to change bit. Bit? Oh, boy. Because these bit. are drills, that's a that's drill. drill. Everything's and, done. Uh, the, um, one of the hardware stores, they have these drills, they're very good drills, and they're only like 20, 24 yeah. hours, you know? Yeah. It takes a lot. To stop, change the bit, it's and, running around. And doing the way I do this, it's, it's, uh... What does the soap, what does that do to the screw? That it makes it easier for the screw in? to go in. Oh. Because when you get, it gets hot, Oh. It turns into like a, an oil, and it makes it easier for the screw to go in. Interesting. And what we have here, I should put a nail yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah, the other nail. We'll fix that. Sounds nice. I know there's still a something that goes down here. No? No. Nope. I'll show you what happens with that. The thing is, you can see what it takes to make a flag. And we 
We've done this for all 2,000 flags. flags. And so now what we have here is a big flag. Is a three by five flag, mm -hmm. a flag on a 10 foot pole what with the veteran's name on here and his branch of service. Right. The section that it goes to. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take this flag and roll it up. And I'll bring it into. Oops, sorry. That's okay. A lot of work goes into a flag. Yep. And there's another flag for the green and orange section. So it's ready to go. And in the meantime, we have a lady that worked that the volunteers for us. She'll take the information, the name. Mm -hmm. uh, branch of service, right. and she'll put it in our locator books. Okay, so should we take a walk over there, or it's in the office? Yeah, it's in the office. Oh, okay. It's I know there's a museum on the wall, so I I really would love to see that part. But we, I really appreciate the the craftsmanship that goes still. into a flag. I really appreciate. I I did not know this. Did not know that there was this workstation back here. I think the viewers watching and those people who come to volunteer didn't even know that these flags were done like this. Well, what usually happens when if I have a bunch of flags to make, what I'll do is I'll build the poles mm -hmm. and I'll put the tape on and I'll put the nameplate on. Then I'll take the pole and I'll slide it up there and I'll build the next one and the next okay, one. Assembly. And then what I'll do is when I'm done with that, say if I have 10 poles built, I'll take them back down and I'll put the flags on, finish it up. Right. So okay. it's easier if I do, if I keep switching from one thing to another thing, it takes a longer time. But if I do one pole at a time and then add flags to them, it goes right. a lot Flag quicker. Last. Right. Yeah, it goes put a lot quicker. Right. Yeah. So wonderful. So let's go take a look at the, the museum. Okay, so Keith. We saw the field of honor. We saw where the field, the, the flags go. You brought us in here. We showed the application, what it takes them. Joe showed us how to make a flag. Now this other piece on the wall. Now viewers that aren't able to come down here, mm -hmm. um, don't know the museum that you guys right. are starting. Well, so that's tell what us. We're calling a museum. Basically what's happened is a lot of people um, coming, especially what else? For some reason, they don't like to keep a lot of stuff and they come and bring it to us. Okay. We've got some stuff that's really important, at least to us. Right. And uh, the main thing is we start here, and that's our uh, opening, opening day, day in 2002 um, when we started it. Boy, look at me. I had all grit and nice hair then, huh? <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, and the bad thing, except for the mayor and I, everyone else is not alive in that picture. Right, I see. So that's I sad. See but Cologne, you know, yeah, Gloria Cologe, Rogan Dewey. Sandy Grassi also, uh, all that. So this is our pictures that we have with the Avenue okay. Flags, our volunteers and stuff like that, our, our co-crew here. Um, sadly, we lost one of our crew members last December, but um, you know, that's the one. And I think that's the thing about me that gets me. I've been here a long time and I've watched so many pass away, it really bothers me. Really good people that meant a lot to me. And they'll be here. You know, we try to put them all here, right? So now this this just looks like a recent one now, or is that when? Yeah, this that's was that's pretty. Uh, that's probably about ten years old. Oh really? really? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. That's that's you know. But, that's the field of honor back yeah. there. Yep, and, and then this that's one. the that's the crew, and then uh, you know that's one of our bro that's like our brochure that they put up there. And, uh, okay, right on top. Uh, about don't burn your flag, you know, and things like that. And this mm -hmm. is a. One of the guys that has a flag here, he just passed away too, Joe Gallifero. He was a funny uh, guy, 90-something years old. He served, uh, in fact, he served in um, World War II on a ship, a Tusca, uh, Tusca, uh, go ahead. Oh. Tuscaloosa. Thank you, Tuscaloosa. And he served in um, uh, the North Atlantic, and he served in the Pacific, which is all. Oh. So, I don't know what else we could fill out anybody in, but you this has to. been... Do a flag, a flag. Oh yeah, we could go outside and do a, a flag showing. But listen, I just want to say thank you for no this opportunity no. to come behind. And thank you for doing it. We so We've never been able to show no, anybody. No, like this. Why are we just talking, talking? But yeah. no, actually showing the whole layout on from outside to coming in, getting a flag. Yep. 
the making of the flag. And you know, I mean, we have to say thank you to those who started this. Yes. Well, um, you were one of our volunteers for many, yes, many, many years. I got my so shirt. I, know that. I just want. I just want to say, one to the people that can't come down here. Right. When the flags are up and all well, the volunteers are gone, and like I, I like to sit out in the front here by myself. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice breezy days, the flags are flapping. But I look at the people walking around looking at the flags, and it reminds me of when I was a kid and my family used to go to the cemetery. And the family used to walk around and, and they look at for the flags. And it's so quiet and peaceful. It's just, you know, it's an honor to all the people out there. Yeah. For them to come and, and that was my father, that was my grandfather, that was my wife, that was yeah. whoever it is. It's so peaceful and calm, you know, and it really... So we're hoping that uh, Veterans Day, November 11th, 11th, 11th. November 11th, right. that we'll be here as long as it's not raining yeah, and the we flies will be, will be up. Yep. I know at uh, down at George's Coffee Shop, we're going to do coffee with the vets on November 14th. Mm -hmm. I, I believe uh, Recreation Department is doing, uh, the, doing the, 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 give up on the, 18th. the dinner. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, November 10th. November 10th, I'm sorry. November 10th, right. if you're a veteran, you can uh, right. have a meal delivered right. to your home. So, uh, yeah, we're coming into the November, and I think November's the end of the season, right? We wrap them yes, up at the end. Wrap them up, and then we don't go out wrap them up and, then we, and we also have the Veterans Day Parade November 6th, which we're very involved okay. in. In fact, the Avenue Flags sponsors the float. Okay. For the veterans. Wonderful. All right. So, we're going to end with going outside, showing us yep, how this flag goes in. Thanks. Okay. So, we're outside. Now, you're going to show us a that hole right. is in the ground so I'll take it and you're gonna unravel and show us how the volunteers okay. do this so someone goes around and takes out like, no I would just step and, back yeah because there's the water door. and yeah. I got a white shirt that's got a lot of water that's got a lot of water so you unravel the flag now you don't let it touch the ground no don't. never okay so you back yeah up. watch out it's gonna squirt you're not gonna go See the water? Okay. It goes right in. And what we do too is we also turn them so that so the name see. of the veteran are with us. Yeah, John Beagle's flag flies John in the front Beagle's of the right barn here. all the oh, time. That's so wonderful. Look that's at his honor. How wonderful. Hey, Mr. John. Thank you. <laughs> that is nice. Wonderful. All right, so thank you. I look forward to uh, Veterans Day. We're going to put the flags up and we're going to put them away and tuck them away mm -hmm. till the spring. Right. So, Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Thank yeah. you. Here, I'll shake. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you thank for you. what you do. You know, and, what, and why we do this is to always remember all the veterans and honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. That's what this whole thing is about. Yes. Thank you. Good.